Good morning and welcome to Senaru in the north of Lombok. We are here to climb Mount Rinjani. Roy. <laughs> it is uh, Indonesia's second tallest volcano. It's over 12,000 feet. You can see the summit up there. So um, yeah, this could be a challenge. But I also think it's going to be the best thing we've done in Indonesia. I can't wait. Who said we had lemons, please? Made in your God's image. I tip it out to the window screen. I can hear you breathe. Last year, got us feeling mad. No, I don't reach up on my sleeve. Had something for you since middle school. They that'll stay. Hey. Something to say, but I forgot amongst the small We could lay down on the floor with your bow, grab a hold of the fact that we grown and we still don't got hold got you, but I still feel alone. Feeling Rinjani. Some of you more eagle-eyed viewers may have seen the t-shirt I've been wearing here, Rinjani. And I also mentioned it in last week's episode. Should be good training for Rinjani. Rinjani was the grand finale of this adventure. This is what everything has been building up to. I'd first spotted it whilst I was on my own exploring Lombok before the boys arrived in Indonesia. We saw it flying from Bali to Flores and again when our boat arrived in Lombok. It's this incredibly dominant feature on the Lombok skyline. Literally wherever you are on the island, if you look in the right direction, you will see Rinjani. And finally, we were setting out to conquer it. After a rough truck journey to our start point, we were ready. Boys are ready. Getting those clips done up. Luke has brought a rather large bag. Not sure Luke's going to make it, but the rest of us should be okay. Accompanying us on this journey were two German travellers, Anna and Lucas. Leading the way was our heroic local guide, Nahu. Okay, we are officially starting this track. Are we in a break yet? Going downhill. Going downhill. <laughs> Let's see how this goes, boys. All of the discussion and planning over the last few months had centred around Rinjani. How hard would it really be? What could we expect? Will we make it? We are about to find out the answers. About 20 minutes into the trek and just climbing on the slopes now and you finally kind of realise what you're getting yourself into. We are climbing this huge volcano. <laughs> The first day of trekking involved us beginning the climb across the low grassy slopes before ascending up to camp on the crater rim. We were looking to gain about 4,900 feet in altitude. For the first few hours, the walk was pleasant. Respect for this volcanic beast grew as we crossed over giant gorges carved out by previous eruptions. In fact, the route across the grassy slopes was so easy that the locals even drove their bikes up.
Before we knew it, it was already time for lunch. The porters cooked us up a delicious meal and after an hour's rest, we were pushing on once more. The meal turned out to be exactly what we needed because we were about to burn a whole load of energy. With the ease of the grassy slopes behind us, the route was suddenly a lot steeper. Seemingly reflecting the bleakness ahead, the scenery rapidly transitioned into a forest of dead trees and ash. At this point, the boys began to separate. Roy and John were powering up ahead like mountain goats, whilst Luke and Dan began to fall behind. Luke and Dan are struggling a bit, so I'm gonna stay back and help them. Heroically, I elected myself to stay behind and offered Luke and Dan motivation to carry on. Absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I was tired because I was definitely not tired at all. Come on boys, I'm staying back to motivate you. As the gradient increased and the altitude kicked in, each step became harder and harder. We were soon stopping frequently. A little pit stop, the climb is definitely getting harder. Starting to feel the altitude. <laughs> Along the way were stopping points, positions one, two, and three. Departing three, we entered the final hellish push to the crater rim. Uh, okay, we are now leaving position three, heading to the crater rim. I think this is going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wanted to make a special mention at this point. Whilst we're all proper struggling, like walking, labouring, one step at a time, these local porters were just walking on by as if it was nothing. Not even breaking a sweat. And they're carrying up to 50 kilograms on their shoulders. They're wearing flip-flops. <laughs> Crazy. I have a lot of respect for those guys. It was demoralizing for me to be there sweating and panting and like, I look to my right and there's a guy wearing flip-flops, but I have a lot of respect for these guys. They're doing it every single week. That's how they earn their money to feed their families. Absolutely mental. At this point, boys, I think the altitude is kicking in. Yeah, 100%. I feel shocked, man. The dust won't help here. The dust is everywhere. It's hard work. But I think this will probably be the last time we stop with the view before the clouds kick in. Every step now took us further into the clouds, higher and higher. Here, the altitude was really starting to take effect. In normal conditions, climbing a mountain is its pretty hard, right? It's pretty tough. It's an exertion on your body. Up here, at several thousand feet, your body is working twice as hard. There's less oxygen, so your heart begins to thump. Your head is pounding, every breath is short, and every step forward is a small victory. Before this trek, I was always wondering what, what's altitude sickness like, and I was now finding out that it's not fun. It's not fun at all. After nearly eight hours, one by one, lost in the clouds, we finally found ourselves on the crater rim. Just made it to the uh, crater rim. That was the hardest climb I've done yet. <laughs> Altitude. At 8,664 feet, my crisp looks a lot like I'd taken them on a plane. Because we're so high up, my crisps have gone full on like a pillow. The boys, meanwhile, it's an even worse shape. The boys have made it. Yes. Roy, did you fall over? Oh, uh, not quite. No. <laughs> Jeez. Took the, took the wrong route. I took the stupid route off. You followed me. me <laughs> the yes, the boys. Everyone's here. Whew. Yes. How are you feeling? Yeah. 
Oh man. I'm impressed you boys made this, it's good. I that's the hard thing ever done. Yeah. That was hard. A few minutes further along the rim, we set up our tent in what is sure to be one of the greatest places we've ever camped. As the clouds finally rolled away, we were gifted with our first proper view of this stunning landscape. Honestly, every time I see this footage, I like, I literally have to pinch myself. This was insane. We were on this little knife edge with huge drops either side, hundreds of feet. It was just... <sighs> Up above us, the task at hand for tomorrow had also revealed itself. There we go, boys. That is what we're doing tomorrow morning at 2 a.m. Oh my God. How's everyone feeling about that? Not too happy. Yeah, I can't even be honest. I got, <laughs> I got excitement going off at that last bit. It just kept it's on going. The yes, that's yeah. the summit. It's so close. I know. That's not that is not close. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that is. So tomorrow we wake up here. We go up, 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 up and hopefully summit for sunrise 3,600 meters Woo! Now that we had stopped I think we all realised just how shattered we were <laughs> Looking back down from where we came we finally grasped just how far and just how high we had climbed Perched on this tiny knife edge, we watched the sun slowly sink behind the crater. As soon as it was gone, the temperature plummeted. Under torchlight, we ate our final meal. This was the real mountaineering experience, and in a few hours, it was about to get a whole lot harder. Okay, we have uh, had our scram, and then I think it's just time for bed. Yeah, man, we've got to be up at, be up at two a.m. to um, yeah to get to the summit. So after a long, grueling track, uh, we points we didn't think we'd make it. <laughs> I definitely didn't think I'd make it at some point. That was probably that was the hardest thing I've done. That was so grueling. But it'll all be worth it when we get. The top. If, if we get to the top. So yeah, we're up at 2am, we just camped out on this little ridge, crater rim. Today has been fucking sick. See you in a few hours. Our tent rustles all night in the howling wind. The clear skies above revealed a mesmerising canvas of stars and galaxies. Okay, it is, um, I think it's 2am, I don't know what the time is. Very early in the morning, and we are now setting off for the summit. If I could show you, I would. There's like a big line of little ants 
little torch lights going up to the summit already. Um, I guess I'll just start filming stuff when it gets light. But this is going to be tough. Here we go, boys. The climb from camp to summit would take us four hours, gaining an altitude of roughly 3,600 feet. Our first task was to make it up onto the final ridge. Okay, we just made it up that first bit. We are now on the final ridge to the summit. It's literally two steps forward, one step back. From here, it was one long hard push all the way to the top. Again, the boys quickly began to break apart. This time, John and Luke powered ahead whilst Rich and Dan toiled at the back. In between, me and Jake climbed separately. I'd be lying if I told you that this was an enjoyable climb. Alone in the dark, the only thing you could do was trudge slowly forwards, following your small torchlight and the person in front of you. Nobody talks, it's just the sound of gravel and heavy breathing. All the way along the ridge from our camp to summit was a trail of torchlights. All of us marching like ants in a line. I have no idea if you can see anything right now. I'm filming on the GoPro. I took uh, some long exposure photos that I'll show you just to give you an idea. You can see the torches climbing up. I think the final, the final scramble is going to be tough. Up here, the altitude really began to play havoc. I could literally, I could feel my body almost screaming out, demanding more oxygen. My head was pounding, my heart, it was just working overtime. Coupled with this, with the ice cold temperatures. Having spent the past two weeks at sea level in tropical 34 degree heat every single day, this was now a shock. We were suddenly 12,000 feet up in below freezing temperatures. It wasn't easy. This is the hardest thing I have ever done. So close to the summit, but it's just rocks and gravel. Two steps forward, one step back. <sighs> this is hard. Every single step was a genuine struggle. I, I honestly will never forget this. Because of the incline we were on, it was so steep, and the gravel beneath us, it was literally two steps forward, and then as soon as you stopped, you, you just couldn't, you couldn't stop yourself from slipping back down. As soon as you became stationary, you could feel yourself sinking slowly back down. It was so demoralizing. So I, I devised this system where I would use a real burst of energy and smash out 10 forward steps and then I would kind of stop and count to 10 in my head catching my breath. I have no idea if this is a, a good technique, uh, it seemed to be the only one which was working for me. I, I really cannot emphasize how hard this was. Having lost the boys, it was also mentally tough. There was nobody there to talk to, nobody pushing me on or giving me motivation. I was just alone with my own thoughts in my head. And I'm not gonna lie, there were, I think there was one or two times where I genuinely started to think, yeah, I'm not gonna make this. Eventually, as the morning light began to creep up over the horizon, exhausted and most definitely a bit delirious, I caught a glimpse of the summit. I could hardly believe it. 
I remember saying to myself over and over again, I'm gonna summit. <sighs> that was the summit. I'm about to summit. <sighs> oh my god. <sighs> I'm gonna summit. <sighs> yeah. Using my last ounces of energy, I dragged myself up, literally stumbling the last 100 meters to the top. Yes! The base! This whole moment was a genuine blur. I didn't know what to do or say. I was completely elated and destroyed. Almost in shock. We're almost there, Dan. Oh, we're close, kid. Not too long to go. Oh, we are both dying. 50 meters. Our guys just saved our life. A porter came up behind us with some jammy dodges. I think it might have genuinely just saved our life. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. I'd be happy if I'd never see a mountain ever again in my life. I am so glad that Roy was filming stuff on his camera, just the odd bit here and there. This is possibly my favourite piece of footage from the whole trip. Roy and Dan, they were, they were genuinely like Frodo and Sam on Mount Doom. The boys watched as they heroically pushed themselves to the very limit. Thing I have ever done. That is the hardest thing I've ever done. That like when I got to that last bit, I literally I was thinking, I was like, all the way up, I was like, is it? Is it? And then I got to that bit, I was like, oh my god. Uh, yeah, it was like two steps, then three steps back. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah, Josh, when you were walking in front of me on that pit, he like caused avalanches. I was like, oh, oh man. I just kept stopping. At last, we all made it. 12,224 feet. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Smashed. Only just. Woo! <laughs> just made it. Hold that sign further in. You still alive yet, Dan? Yeah, yeah that's just it. Good. Just good. about me. Okay, he's in flash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, dude. Woo! Big fellas. So sick. After a short rest and still riding the high, the boys surfed their way across the gravel back down to camp. Now that it was daylight, 
I was able to film the monstrosity of the incline we had struggled up a few hours before. Look how horrible that is! Look! It was on our arrival back down to camp that we realised this journey was far from over. For this trek, we had paid for three days and two nights. Despite everyone being shattered, and I literally mean everyone just collapsed when we got back to camp, we still had an incredibly long trek ahead of us in order to reach the next campsite for the next night. We were now going to descend even further, down into the stunning greenery of the crater. We could cross this via the lake, and then, most gruelling of all, ascend back up on the other side. Unsure of what energy we had left, we began making our way down from the ridge. spent the morning since 2am summiting with Johnny. This place is beautiful, but we're all knackered. The landscape we now found ourselves in really was stunning. When we finally reached the lake shore, there were also natural hot springs to enjoy. About to get in the hot spring. I have no idea how hot this is. Woo! Ooh, that's nice. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. oh my god! Refreshed, we pushed on along the lake. Those hot springs were pretty cool. No, they're pretty hot actually. Um, that was terrible. <laughs> um, we are now doing the final hike of the day. So we come along the lake here and we're climbing up to the other side of the crater rim. It's another three hours. So this is easily the furthest I've walked in a day and the hardest my body has worked. But the scenery is stunning. This place really was special and it was hard not to stop every five minutes to take more photos or get more footage. It maybe even made the arduous climb back up the crater rim just a tiny bit easier. Like I said though, this was by far the furthest and the longest any of us had walked in a day. I think we covered maybe, I think at least 17 kilometers not to mention the height we gained and came back down and went back up again. Uh, we walked, we're walking from like 2 a.m. and we didn't stop until 7 p.m. So at the end of the day, safe to say our brains were a little bit pretty much turned to mush. Decent view, like. Whew. Uh, but yeah, yeah. At long last, we made it. We were touching the clouds again. Up here, we watched a magic sunset and began to reflect as the Milky Way sailed overhead. This was now the end of our journey.
It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you again. <laughs> hey, boys, this is it. Uh, representation of the trip. It's all downhill from here. It's all coming to an end. Uh, I hope we make it. Everyone's legs are starting to fall apart now. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, look into getting a knee replacement as soon as we get back to you. There's nothing really left to look forward to, is there? No, it's just, just pain and just pain, and then you guys go, and I get lonely. And... Damn. No, all the planes we flew, good things we've been through. That I'll be standing right here talking to you about another path. I know we love to hit the road and laugh, but something told me that it wouldn't last. Had to switch up, look at things different, see the bigger picture. Those were the days, hard work forever pays. Now I see you in a better place. As we made our way down the mountain, I thought about everything we've done over the last few weeks. It truly been one of the best trips we've ever done. And now you gonna be with me for the last ride. But like all great stories, there has to be an end. Yeah. I originally thought that we had one last night together at this point, but when we got back down to sea level, the boys dropped a bombshell. They decided to get the last boat over to Bali. They had a flight to catch the next day. And yeah, that was it. Suddenly our trip was over. On a small jetty, we said our farewells. Farewell, boys. Farewell. Good times, man. It was. I'll see you. I'll see you in April. Oh Jesus! Come on. See about your shag rats. Stay out of trouble. See you, dingus. Good times. See you, bro. See you in April, yeah? Farewell, yeah. Cheers for coming out. The rest of the time. I will do. I'll keep you boys updated. <laughs> Broken the love will never get lost. And when brotherhood come first, then the line will never be crossed. Established it on our own when that line had to be drawn, and that line is what we reach. So remember me when I'm gone. How can we not talk about family when family's all that we got? Everything I went through, you were standing there by my side. And now you're gonna be with me for the last ride. sucks when these things have to come to an end. Sad saying goodbye because I won't see the boys again until I'm back in the UK and that's at least seven months away so it's sad but I think we can all safely agree that was one of the best trips any of us have ever done. So thank you boys for coming out it's been a pleasure as always success I've got a feeling there's gonna be more trips like this so until next time. 
couldn't have put it better myself. Until next time. When I see